Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here today uh, to honor Mayor Kasim Reed. Mayor Reed, you are an inspiration to us in terms of your courage and your leadership. In November 2015, when in Georgia there was an executive order preventing the resettlement of Syrian refugees in our state, Mayor Reed voiced his, his disapproval over the order, saying Atlanta is and will continue to be a welcoming city. He said, I don't agree with the notion that we should completely close access to Georgia from Syrian refugees. Under his leadership, Mayor Reed became, helped Atlanta become a welcoming city. This Welcoming Atlanta initiative brings together city, government, and community leaders to create a more welcoming and inclusive Atlanta that attracts and retain diverse talent from all over the world. Mayor Reed continues on. On November 28, 2016, Mayor Reed issued a statement reaffirming Atlanta as a welcoming city. He said, as mayor, I pledge that your government will not waver in its commitment to inclusivity and diversity and will remain open and welcoming to all. Mayor Reed, we applaud you for your leadership, for your courage, for taking a stand and you inspire us every day. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. We appreciate you. It's mutual. And Imam Pleman will present you with the award. Yes. On behalf of the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta, we present you the Courage Award presented to the Honorable Kasim Reed, Mayor of Atlanta, for his leadership and commitment to inclusion, the year 2016. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm so honored. Thank you so much, Imam. Thank you. And uh, one more gift for you, Mayor yes. Reed, before we uh, continue. Yes. And uh, Mr. Amin Tomei has a gift for you from the Islamic Speakers Bureau. Thank you so nice to see you. Thank you very much. This is um, just a few things I'd like to. So we can take a photo. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we've included uh, our Islamic Speakers Bureau uh, brochure and also wanted you to have a copy of Pathways, a publication of the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta, where our executive director, Nusuma Athanifa, and Bishop White were uh, interviewed uh, in an interfaith discussion. Bishop uh, White and our classmates at Howard. Wow. We also want you to have one of our t-shirts, which celebrates the uh, Muslim community as they come together in uh, supporting the hunger walk over the past 10 years. <laughs> and the uh, publication here that we have highlighting the 100 influential Georgia Muslims, uh, a lot of them from Atlanta, and also we also have a publication which celebrates the 40 under 40 influential Muslims of Georgia. I want to add something here. The 40 under 40 was actually Dan Gordon's idea. Oh, wow. so, and his name is mentioned in the book. Oh. <laughs> wow. This is nice. Well, good morning. Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. I want to express my deep appreciation uh, to Samaya Khalifa for taking the time, one, to be here, and really for um, giving me this special moment after last week when, uh, when my daughter's uh, cold got the best of me to prevent me from uh, being with you. I was uh, deeply sad that I couldn't be here. So to be able to recreate this moment today um, really does matter to me because this award um, means a great deal to me and this uh, acknowledgement means a great deal to me. Uh, today I am pleased uh, to be presented with the Courage Award. Uh, this recognition from the Islamic Speakers Bureau is truly humbling. I value your consideration deeply and sincerely and it is a gift that I will cherish always. 
I look forward to remaining worthy of the tribute by continuing to live up to the principles enshrined in its conception and in the work that all of you do every day. Uh, I hope that in the years to come that uh, my behavior actually earns and makes me more worthy of this acknowledgement, not less. It's my administration's responsibility and privilege to ensure that the city of Atlanta treats all of her residents and visitors with respect, with dignity, and with fairness, and even more that, with a welcoming heart. I don't think it is enough in these days and times simply to say that your rights will be protected. I think that what will make Atlanta different than other cities in the United States is that um, not only are we going to make sure um, that people's rights are respected, but there is a warmth in our city. And that when people of all faiths come to the city of Atlanta, they feel that they are someplace different. They feel that they can um, wear the traditional and customary um, garbs or represent representations of their faith and their culture. And rather than being condemned for it, they actually feel like they contribute to a tapestry and it's actually something that makes us all more interesting. I think that America was fundamentally built on the constitutional guarantee of religious freedom. And I am so proud right now uh, that people in the city of Atlanta um, show uh, that really inclusion is a part of our DNA and we're only going to get better. That promise of liberty will always rightfully extend to our Muslim sisters and brothers. Atlanta's legacy is that of a place where anyone can bring and build their dreams. We have always been a city of dreamers, and that's why we are where we are today. Atlanta was not simply catapulted to being one of the leading cities in the Southeast accidentally. It was because of the way that we dealt with challenges that other people in America said that Atlanta should be a leading place. Atlanta is global and is ascendant city because we recognize the wisdom of diversity and the power of multiple voices. We know that when we accept our differences yet work together, we speak as one in the language of shared prosperity. I want to assure the Muslim community that we will continue to vigorously protect and support immigrant students who are DACA recipients. We value the culture and economic vitality that these younger people bring to our city. I can also assure you that the city of Atlanta will not tolerate acts of hatred against any of our residents and visitors. And we will process crimes of this nature to the fullest extent of the law, and they will have a high priority within our police department. It is incumbent upon all of us to find strength in our differences and comfort in our common identity. Today, as we approach a season that is so special to so many of us, I ask all Atlantans to open our hearts and our minds. Let us confirm our respect for humanity and stand on the right side of history as a community that is welcoming and inclusive of all of its neighbors. Finally, I want to say this. Um, over the last uh, month, month and a half, with the election results of November 8th, I think uh, that uh, many of us, certainly people who care about inclusion and fairness, have been a bit dispirited. Uh, I really challenge all of us to take the holiday season uh, really to go away and spend time with people that we love, care about, and respect. And I think that we should come back in January renewed and excited about the path ahead. You know, I have a view of the Constitution that in America, our Constitution expands and contracts. So when you have the election of President Barack Obama in 2008, right, in 2010, there's a contraction. And then you had the election of 2000 in 2012 where the majority of Americans supported the re-election of President Obama, and then I think you have a contraction. It's really up to us to make sure that the progress is not lost, though. 
And so the reason that I was excited about this moment today is uh, it gives me an opportunity to speak to people who uh, walk the walk and live the walk every single day. And it's a powerful reminder to me that um, we got to dust ourselves off and get ready to get out here. And we've got to get out here and be ready to have these conversations. And we've got to be ready to have moments like this. And we've got to explain to people why the vision in this office is the best vision for the United States of America long term. And that we're not going to be cowed. And that the greatness of America is in another two years and another four years, we can have this conversation all over again. And there is nobody who won't understand what's at stake because the things that we are seeing are so different than the America that we love and know. And so you honor me today, but more than honoring me, you inspired me in a way that I need to be inspired. And for that, I consider you all a blessing. Can't wait to get my books. Can we take a quick picture? No, we're gonna take plenty of pictures. Yeah. <laughs> 